This is the lesson for maps from page number 23 to page number 29. Let's listen to the lesson number 4 maps page number 23. You have learned in the previous chapter about the advantages of a globe. However, globe has limitations as well. A globe can be useful when we want to study the earth as a whole. But when we want to study only a part of the earth, as about our country, states, districts, towns and villages, it is of little help. In such a situation, we use maps. A map is a representation or drawing of the earth's surface or a part of it drawn on a flat surface according to a scale. But it is impossible to flatten a round shape completely. We find that maps are useful to us for various purposes. One map shows a small area and a few facts. Another map may contain as many facts as a big book. When many maps are put together, we get an atlas. Atlases are of various sizes, measurements, drawn on different scales. Maps provide more information than a globe. They are of different types. Some of them are described below. Physical maps Maps showing natural features of the earth, such as mountains, plateaus, plains, rivers, oceans, etc. are called physical or relief maps. Political maps Maps showing cities, towns and villages and different countries and states of the world with their boundaries are called political maps. Thematic maps Some maps focus on specific information, such as road maps, rainfall maps, maps showing distribution of forests, industries etc. are known as thematic maps. Suitable titles are given on the basis of information provided in these maps. Let's do! Take an old rubber ball and draw whatever you like all over it. You may also mark North Pole and South Pole on it. Now cut this ball with a knife and try to flatten it. Notice how the drawings are distorted. Page number 24 There are three components of maps. Distance, direction and symbol. Distance Maps are drawings which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper. Or we can say maps are drawn to reduced scales. But this reduction is done very carefully so that the distance between the places is real. It can only be possible when a small distance on paper represents a large distance on the ground. Therefore, a scale is chosen for this purpose. Scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map. For example, the distance between your school and your home is 10 kilometers. If you show this 10 kilometers distance by 2 centimeter on a map, it means 1 centimeter on the map will show 5 kilometers on the ground. The scale of your drawing will be 1 centimeter equals 5 kilometers. Thus, scale is very important in any map. If you know the scale, you will be able to calculate the distance between any two places on a map. When large areas like continents or countries are to be shown on a paper, then we use a small scale. For example, 5 cm on the map shows 500 km of the ground. It is called a small scale map. When a small area like your village or town is to be shown on paper, then we use a large scale that is 5 cm on the map shows 500 meters only on the ground. It is called a large scale map. Large scale maps give more information than small scale maps. Direction Most maps contain an arrow marked with the letter N at the upper right hand corner. This arrow shows the north direction. It is called the north line. When you know the north, you can find out other directions, for example east, west and south. There are four major directions, north, south, east and west 
as shown in figure 4.2a. Let's do. Look at the figure 4.1. There is a scale. It may be used for measuring distance between places. For example, the distance between the well and the tree is 5 cm. It means that the actual distance is 50 meters. Now, the distance between the POA to Kareem's house E is 12 cm. It means 120 meters on the ground, but you cannot fly like a bird directly from E to A. You will have to walk on the road. Let us measure the total walking distance from E to C, then C to M, M to B and B to A. Add all these distances. This will be the total walking distance from Kareem's house to the post office. Page number 25 Figure 4.1 Map of a village The above map shows distance in metre where the scale is as per 1 cm equals 10 metres and on the scale we see 50 metres marked, 40 metres marked, 30 metres marked, 20 metres marked, 10 metres marked and the scale starts from 0 and goes till 50 metres. We also see a playground, a school, an orchard, Karin's house, Sheila's house, Vikas's house. We see shops, a well, post office, community centre and a tree. Kareem's house has been marked as point E. Sheila's house has been marked as point D. Vikas's house is marked as point H. We also see pointers M, B and A. There are four major directions, north, south, east and west as shown in figure 4.2a. They are called cardinal points. Other four intermediate directions are northeast, NE, southeast, SE, southwest, SW, and northwest, NW. We can locate any place more accurately with the help of these intermediate directions. Find out the following directions from the figure 4.1. A. The direction of the community centre. The playground from Vikas's house. B. The direction of school from shops. We can find out the direction of a place with the help of a compass. It is an instrument used to find out main directions. Its magnetic needle always points towards north-south direction, as shown in figure 4.2b. Figure 4.2a shows cardinal directions, wherein the sides are marked as north, south, northeast, east, southeast, southwest, west, northwest. Figure 4.2b shows a compass. Page number 26 Symbols It is the third most important component of a map. It is not possible to draw on a map the actual shape and size of different features such as buildings, roads, bridges, trees, railway lines or a well. So, they are shown by using certain letters, shades, colours, pictures and lines these symbols give a lot of information in a limited space. With the use of these symbols, maps can be drawn easily and are simple to read. Even if you don't know the language of an area and therefore cannot ask someone for directions, you can collect information from maps with the help of these symbols. Maps have a universal language that can be understood by all. There is an international agreement regarding the use of these symbols. These are called conventional symbols. Some of the conventional symbols are shown in the figure 4.3. Figure 4.3 shows conventional symbols, wherein we notice railway line, broad gauge, meter gauge, railway station, roads, metalled, unmetalled, boundary, international, state, District 
river, well, tank, canal, bridge, temple, church, mosque, chhatri, post office, post and telegraph office, police station, settlement, graveyard, trees, grass. Various colors are used for the same purpose. For example, generally, blue is used for showing water bodies, brown for mountains, yellow for plateau, and green is used for plants. Page number 27. Figure 4.4 shows Sundarpur village and its surrounding areas. Sketch a sketch is a drawing mainly based on memory and spot observation and not to scale. Sometimes, a rough drawing is required for an area to tell where a particular place is located with respect to other places. Suppose, you want to go to your friend's house, but you don't know the way. Your friend may make a rough drawing to show the way of his house. Such a rough drawing is drawn without scale and is called a sketch map. Plan a plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale. A large scale map gives lot of information. But there are certain things which we may sometimes want to know. For example, the length and breadth of a room which can't be shown in a map. At that time, we can refer drawings drawn to scale called a plan. Let's do! Visit web portal School Bhuvan NCERT and draw online neighborhood map on satellite imageries. Look at the figure 4.4 and find out 1. In which direction is the river flowing? 2. What kind of road passes by the site of village Dumri? 3. On what type of railway line is Sundarpur situated? 4. On which side of the railway bridge is the police station situated? 5. On which side of the railway line do the following lie? A. Chhatri B. Church C. Pond D. Mosque E. River F. Post and Telegraph Office G. Graveyard Page number 28 Exercises 1. Answer the following questions briefly. A. What are the three components of a map? B. What are the four cardinal directions? C. What do you mean by the term the scale of the map? D. How are maps more helpful than a globe? A. Distinguish between a map and a plan. F. Which map provides detailed information? G. How do symbols help in reading maps? 2. Tick the correct answers. A. Maps showing distribution of forests are 1. Physical map 2. Thematic map 3. Political map B. The blue colour is used for showing 1. Water bodies 2. Mountains 3. Plains C. A compass is used. 1. To show symbols. 2. To find the main direction. 3. To measure distance. D. A scale is necessary. 1. For a map. 2. For a sketch. 3. For symbols. Things to do. 1. Draw a plan of your classroom and show the teacher's table, blackboard, desks, door and windows. 2. Draw a sketch of your school and locate the following. A. The principal's room. B. Your classroom. C. The playground. D. The library. E. Some big trees. F. Drinking water. Page number 29. For fun. 1. 
Make the plan in the space given below of a fun park where you can enjoy several activities. For example, swings, slides, seesaw, merry-go-round, boating, swimming, looking into funny mirrors, etc. or anything else that you can think of. The chapter 4 of total 8 chapters of the book ends here.